Huss. Unique fashion. Huss. Elam Road. Huss. Shout out to my boy E. Keep it going. Huss. This for you, boy. Huss. Boy, I got a unique huss. I had to get it out the mud. I huss. I ain't waiting on shit. I huss. Everything I get. I huss. I grind all the time. I huss. Money on my mind. I huss. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. Walk on. Hey, what's going on? Nothing, nothing. Say, man. we, hey, man, listen, man. We've been getting a lot of people come through. You know what I'm saying? And 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 when I was dealing with the with the the DJ thing, you know, I, we done had several DJs on here. I say, man, you know, I love East Texas. And and so when I start asking around, they say you got it, man. You you heard of, uh, this DJ? I was like, yeah, no, nah, I ain't never heard of the nigga. But then I started to research and found out he was impacting the whole thing, the whole thing down there, mm-hmm. the whole cake, man. Check it out, man. My boy DJ Juice in the building. What up with it, man? What's up, man? Thank you for coming on the show. Man, I just appreciate you for having me, Real man. Talk. I know you're a professional, nigga. Hell, yeah. I already done. Hey, I heard about you, nigga. Don't try to. Yeah, they man. paying you for this, nigga. You get behind the mic, nigga. You get paid, <laughs> nigga. Look, don't ask me for no money, nigga. I can't do it. Hey man, you nah man, the blessing is here, man. I, I feel like I feel like the uh the relationship is worth more than money. So Whoa. You know see, see quick on his words. You gotta yeah. watch him. You gotta you know watch saying? these niggas. You these sure radio folks, these personalities. You sure he, he could be. We don't know yet. He you little you little DJs, the personalities, these right. people can rap. Hey, I'm just saying. You I know mean you saying? rap. Nah, I, I made a couple songs. See what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I made a couple They I would never put them out now though. Okay. Hey, check it. Do me a favor, man. Oh, Just if, if people ain't, ain't familiar with who DJ Juice is, man, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who you are? Where you from? What you and do? How you came up with that name? We gonna get oh, all that, man. You want <laughs> we gonna get all that juice? I mean, I'm Juice, man. Uh, I would say I'm from Atlanta, but really, I'm from everywhere. Okay, you know, my pops was in the military. Okay, so I stayed in San Diego. Um, I stayed in Arkansas. I stayed in Philly. I stayed in New York. You know, what I'm saying I spent most of my time though, most of my uh, my dad's side of family is in Atlanta, and then uh, my mom's side is Island, Texas. So okay. when I moved to Texas, it was because my mom, she had lupus. Okay. So I kind of wanted to be closer to her because cool. I, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, was raised by my father. Okay, that's yeah. what's up, man. So um, the thing I want to ask is how how did you end up getting in the in, in the radio scene and the personality thing and the D, DJ and what's going on? Man, really? And do you uh, really DJ? Like, yeah, so you have yeah, certain I'm, niggas. I'm a that, DJ. Like, cause you remember when Jay, people, yeah, Jay Cruz was on here. He's like, I'm just a personality. Person, I'm not. Yeah, radio okay, personality, nigga. not a DJ. Yeah, I'm a personality and I'm a, and DJ. a DJ. But I okay. started off as a DJ, which led me to becoming a personality. Okay, okay, you okay. Know what I'm saying? Uh, How did you get that door to open, though? Man, really going to the clubs. Because I would go to the club and there was a guy by the name of Lester Side. Shout out to him. He's in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he started The Blaze, basically. In 1999, he was the first person on air. Well, uh, when I am when I moved to Texas, I'm going to the clubs. I ain't liking the music. I ain't going to lie. I'm just like, man, why they playing all this slow stuff in the club? Mm-hmm. So I would go home and make mixtapes, well, make a CD with a whole bunch of Atlanta music. I gave them Young Jock is Going Down. I gave them all this music. And I was like, hey, play this. Play Walk It Out. Play West Side Walk It Out. Play this. And he like... I'm going to do it because you want me to play it and you're going to dance to it. And then next thing you know, people looking. And people are like, damn, who, who the hell this nigga is? And you can dance. Past tense. <laughs> <laughs> you know back in the day. If days. you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know my wife Jamaican, so when you say dance, it's a whole different level. See, we don't dance like them, no way. You can't dance like no Jamaican people. I have been over there, nah, and you will not be able to do it. Though, I got embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? I was in New York. I wanted to go out and met some chicks. They were like, yeah, we're going to go out. So first off, I didn't know what time people go out. I was like 14 years old. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready at 8 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this girl, I'm asleep on this plastic couch. You know the couch where you got yeah, to yeah, get yeah, up yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sticky yeah, couch. Yeah, yeah. I'm asleep. She called at 12 o'clock. I'm like, I don't know. She like. You ready? You ready? I'm like, yeah. She's like, you sleep? I'm like, no, nah, I was just coming out. I'm ready. <laughs> I had to go hit the teeth real quick. Man, we went to the club. I'm behind this chick, and I'm like, yeah. Atlanta, you just stand there. You just boom, you post up, and they do all the work. The girl turned around and told me, she's like, you can't dance. You can't dance. <laughs> I was hurt. Yeah, yeah, she wants you to so grind. I had to go, to the, chicks. I had to go to the chicks who I came with before, though. Hey, the girl said I couldn't dance. Like, what, what's going on? She's like, what was you doing? I was like. Just standing. 
She was like, nah, you got to move your hips and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I started doing that, though, man, I got, I, hey, I won that night. Already, yeah, man. I won that night. Already, yeah. man. So, New York, well, you say you grew up a little bit there or you just visiting? No, I just visiting, man. That's I what's up. Well, oh, because of the military. Dad in the military. Nah, my uncle was staying out there. Your the uncle was staying out there. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's what's up. So, and you say you went, y'all ended up in Tyler. No, Tyler is because my mother is actually from Tyler. Texas. Okay, where where do, where do you live now, if you don't mind me? I stay in Tyler. Okay, so when you was in Tyler, basically you was at the club, and then that's how you end up on the radio. Yeah, messing with uh, Lush, Lush Ice was basically one of those guys who was on the radio, and I was giving him music. And then the Pimp C concert happened, and he was like, oh, you DJ? Then he gave me an opportunity to open up for him in the club. Once I took that, then he was like, hey, you ever thought about radio? I was like, nah, they put me on the choir storm, hated it. I, but I thought it was I what bet. it was supposed Like, I thought I was supposed to be talking and being a little sexy guy. That's all I know. This man didn't want me to talk. He just wanted me to take requests on the radio and, and just play, play the, the person talking and music. And then I couldn't play what I wanted to hear. So I'm like, man, this song, Bottoms Up, it's kind of fast. That's not a slow jam. Shut up. That's the way the music's supposed to be. And I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I don't want to do this. This is whack because I... I saw jams. I grew up off of R. Kelly and all that stuff. So that's what I want to hear. I want to mm-hmm. hear the genuine mm-hmm. of the tanks. I'm like, yo, what y'all doing? Yeah, and that's all I listen to is Quiet Storm. Oh my God. I love all them slow music and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So then they end up dropping that because that situation didn't work anyway. So, <laughs> so did they, you end up getting on the day shift eventually? Yeah, did the weekends. Yeah. Did weekends for a year. I was doing mixing and all that stuff. And then, sure. Now, what time your show come on? Seven to midnight, Monday through Friday. Hey, seven to midnight. See, those are the awesome. best times to do it because you get the faster crowd to get the people who want to hear something before they hit the club man you get all of that but you i mean you get people who are just riding around and they i get people who are on boats because i'm in east texas so it's like people hunting and people right, fishing and right, all right. kind of stuff so i get people calling yeah man i'm on the middle of the lake man fishing man i'm listening to you man Hey, man, you think you play some, some Eminem? Really? <laughs> I'm like, nah, probably not the M, but I got something for you. Not the M, huh? Not the M. I don't blame you. Yeah. No, but anyway, Eminem. <laughs> Shout out to Eminem, yeah, man. We, cool. we, we, we ain't gonna, we gonna, we ain't gonna rock out. We can't get jiggy with it. Nah, I got a co-worker who, he an Eminem head, but me, I ain't, I ain't really, you know. So the thing, um, I mean, so... In the in, in down in in, in uh, Tyler, Texas, man, you come on at seven. Really, your competition is uh, uh Bay Bay up here in Dallas. He he around about that same time. Yeah, he come on Dallas. at six, and 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 they can get that down there too, they can't can? they? Yeah, man. Matter yeah, they fact, can. Man, yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. East Texas is so big. That's why I tell artists it's so crucial to know. We go from Tyler. You go all the way up to Mount Pleasant. That's an hour and a half. Yeah, you still get the Blaze Radio Station. Yeah. From Tyler, you go south to Palestine. That's 45 minutes. You still get the radio station. Going west, you go to Ken. You still get, get the, the radio, radio station. station. Going east, you go to Shreveport. We bleed in the Shreveport. So that space, come on now. You but wouldn't. out here, you, you we can't get you out here. No, you can't get us out here. Okay. But, but, but 104, you can get them a little bit down there. Yeah, if you ride 104, from Dallas in the Tyler, you can it'll stay oh, on. It'll stay That's on. right. But if you in Tyler, you just try to flip on. You it ain't gonna come on. Okay, it's, it's that's one how it works. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, man. It's crazy because it's satellites and all that other stuff that's popping. Oh, yeah, so when we real. down there in the woods, can we get any of it? Like when yeah, we down yeah, there? you can get him. Blaze, yeah. yeah okay. Me? She gonna call it the woods. I'm not in the woods because oh, let me tell you, I'm from the woods, man. You, when we drive down say. there and I have the radio on, he's like. <laughs> can't, can't so do you, we're gonna talk about the Drake radio station. Do you so think it? Uh, do you? What do you think about the music? How do you feel about it? Because you you heard me talking earlier. What do man. you think? What, what what's hot down there? You, you, should, you know you who? I'm gonna who, just call it like it is, man. Uh, music has came a long way. Yeah. Because at first, I think people were going on. They were trying to be Houston, and then when Dallas, because East Texas is basically H Town, so then. The Dallas movement came, then everybody tried to ride a Dallas wave. But I think now people are saying, I am this, this is me. This is who I am. And they're putting out music for who they are instead of trying to ride waves of different situations that are around. So I think the music game is elevated now to where we have the Camp Nowhere, you had the Smitties, you have the Seco Peas, you had the Smoothies, you have the Dior CR Days, the Rapping Ass Shies. You have all these guys who are producing records. You got the Remo Prime Times and the Clicks who were like producing records and have brands. And I think my 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 job, my duty is to make sure that 
it's a whole, it's a full brand. And that's why I do what I do. I don't do what I do as far as the music goes because radio, my job is not to play your music. My job is to sell advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point yeah. blank, period. Mm-hmm. My job is not to play any music. The music is added value. My job is to keep people paying attention enough so they can listen to these commercials. Because that's where the money's at, in the commercials. The money in it. We pay the artists when we play the music. Mm-hmm. That ain't us. Mm-hmm. We paying. So what do you, so you, you mentioned a few artists right then, and you heard me say Smoothie and Smitty about the hardest down there, but you got another different insight maybe. Um, uh, it's, it's a lot of artists. Yeah, I know it. Me I, being, me you being in on the radio, radio, you have to know what's going on. So who would you say that uh, may be one that I'm missing out on? That I, I mean, you still have a Smitty and Smoothie. You still have Seco P. Seco P. Who is that? Man, Cat from Jacksonville. Hard. You got Gwalapi. They they kind of run together. Seco P and Gwalapi. Hard. You got uh, T. Jones. He locked up right now. I heard once about he, that guy T. Jones, out, man. You know what I'm saying? Free T. Jones. Once he yeah, get out, he out of Tyler, beast. ain't he? Yeah. Then you got, I mean, you got Ciroc Knight with the lyrical music. You got uh, R&B. I just did a comedy show last night. I had uh, Lump and I had uh, R&G Marco. Okay. Two real dope R and B artists. Uh, you got L Z does R and B. Man, you got man East Texas stand up. It's got all of it. And that's what I'm talking it's about. Got see. All of it. And they got you pretty. And, and how do you think that the the these platform internet, uh, Instagram, uh, tw- Twitter, TikTok? How does that? Because that now everybody it takes away the excuse. Used to you in the country when you first got here, it was hard for artists to be noticed and seen. But now. They get to be noticed and seen through those platforms a lot faster. Oh, those those platforms are important, but what's even more important is making sure that you bridge the gap between those platforms and who you are. Okay, okay. A lot of artists, they look at that and say, okay, I'm going to just release music because I'm going to get the YouTube views, I'm going to get these followers, da-da-da. And some artists say, I'm going to just release music on iTunes, blah, blah, blah. I'm just putting out album after album so I can get me a 9 million streams because I have the same 10 people listening to my album over and over and over. So mm-hmm. when I put out new music, I'm not worried about getting new followers. I'm just trying to keep the followers that I have. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to get people out of that mindset in the mindset of building an actual brand. So that's my job is to be that facilitator to build that brand. So I look at like a lot of artists, like the comedy show, I didn't have to put artists on there, but I put them on there because I'm like, okay, it's a place for this. And I need to be able to showcase Cause where else can you showcase R and B? You can't really do it at a club. Cause I remember, I ain't gonna lie, I was at a club when Sierra got booed in Atlanta. Crime Mob was after her, and this was when we was all in high school. And they loved it. Well, cause we came to the club to get crunk. We didn't come to the club to to do all that <laughs> dance and the stuff. So they booed a boo. Get out of here, Sierra boo. I mean, it it was just a situation where she was just at the wrong playing, venue right. performing. We. We in high school, we fighting, we we throwing balls. We that's what we doing. Mm-hmm. We ain't coming here to boogie and slide across. That's the that crunk movement. You yeah. Talking. So we was on that, but she was performing at that club, which was cool. You know what I'm saying? Because later on, you like damn. Like later on, when I seen Lloyd, I was like damn. That was Lloyd at the school. Wow. How long? How but you know what? Hold on. Um, but to me, that is the manager's um, position to make sure they book their artists at the right venues at the right time. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's not the artist who's saying, I want to go here, I want to go here. You're the one who are booking your artists, right? So you know, okay, you're supposed to look at the demographic. Okay, what kind of club is it? Who normally attends to the club? Do they like this type of music? Well, I think in certain situations, you have to exploit chaos. I'm a big believer in that. Okay. So I'm a big believer in, if I I tell artists all day, go to that pool hall and that there's nothing but Caucasian people and white folks in there. Go to that jukebox and play your song and just sit back and watch people, just just watch their demeanor. Some people are going to bob their heads. Some people might be like, what the hell is this? But watch their demeanor. Because you're going to learn something about people. You're going to learn something about a different crowd, a different audience that you might can take into it. Because just because you do R&B, it's a lot of dudes. We more sensitive than women. Like, straight up. So when it comes to that this R&B stuff, you got to get it out there somehow. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you got to 
put yourself in an uncomfortable situation to learn from that. So I'm all for I do stuff at middle schools, elementary schools. I've gone to schools where I'm talking about all the white folks look at me like I'm crazy when I walk in. I'm like, oh, snap. Am I supposed to be here? And they're like, who? Who? The radio station? Who? Who invited you? And I'm like, the cheerleading coach. And they're like, oh, it's this guy from the place here. And then I, I get that. And then I go in there and those kids lose their fucking mind. And then they have to come back and bite that shit. <laughs> and be like, hey, I'm so happy that you came. No, you you didn't want me here. But you seen the impact that I have on these kids. Yeah. So now it's you know, but okay. it's exploiting chaos. Sometimes you gotta do that. That's what's up, man. So so what do you what do you look kid, I, I gotta ask this, I always ask the same thing. So uh look kid wanna get into DJing. Um uh, I say little kid, teenager. Um, what what would you tell him to to do to be a he want to be a DJ and a personality? What would you what would you tell him? Shoot, you are a DJ and personality, so I'll be like, let me see. That's what I'm going to check gonna, it out. I'm going to say, let me see. I'm going to go. I'm going to be like, I know you can do it. Anybody could do it. You just said that you want to do it. Let me see it. I'm going to ask him right then, right there. Let me like, see it. If he ain't it. got nothing, he ain't doing nothing. No, if it ain't in you, ain't in you. Wow. Like, if it ain't in you, it who's ain't your, in you. Who's okay, your, who's your best DJ? DJ Jelly. Who the hell is DJ Jelly? Mm-hmm. You messed me up with that. In Dallas? Look, I thought you were going to no. say That's why. DJ. No. I thought he you were going to say Fresh no. Prince. Or, no. I mean, Jazz and Jeff. Let me, let me tell you something about uh, DJ Jelly, man. DJ Jelly, um, I grew up off of him in Atlanta. Okay. He's the guy behind, y'all know who DJ Unk is. Yeah. Walk yeah, It Out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the DJ for that record label. Mo- DJ Monte made the Walk It Out beat. DJ Monte, DJ Jelly, and uh, DJ Calvin all used to make mixtapes, and they were all blends. So they would all break music. They would take all the hottest songs, take all the acapellas, put them here, take all the instrumentals, put them here, and they just put that shit together. Yeah. And that shit would just merge, and you'll be like, damn, what am I? Oh. And the beat flip, but a whole nother verse come on, but it's mm-hmm. stuff that you know, and if it's stuff that you don't know, you'd be like, you're. it's a mix. So it's continuous, so you're not stopping. So you're just riding, and that's how music breaks. Music breaks in a club when a person dances and, like the and they don't stop dancing. Right. They don't say, ugh, what is this? Whenever somebody dancing, they know a song, they singing it, then the next song come on, and they keep on dancing. And even if they, and even if they don't know it, it's because it flowed right into the other song. Yeah, because when you DJ, you, you tell a story. It. Right. Definitely. When you DJ, you always have to tell a story. It's like a book. So I want to flip a question that you asked. Okay. When you asked um, to tell a younger person, you know, who wanted to be a DJ. My question to you is if you could go back, how long you been in the business? 11 years. So if you could go back 11 years to when you first started and all the things that you'd known and learned from errors and everything in that 11 years, you could go back and tell you, what would you tell yourself don't do or do or something like that. Be you. Because I think um, there was a point in time, like the pe- for the people who don't know me, um, when I first started DJing, I was DJing at like college parties and stuff like that. And my drop was all the bad bitches listen to DJ Juice. Um, I would be in a club. I could tell a girl to get naked and she would do it at the drop of the dime. I can say, girl, pop that. And she going to, Drop and do the split. I can. I had total control, control over any and everybody in this club, and it, and that's a dangerous position, right? Because if something happens, somebody dies. It's kind of it's kind of all the DJ. It's good and bad because we had a DJ that came on that said that he had to control the crowd. You have change, to change the mood from hostile. To you know, yeah. So, so that's on so it us. Goes both ways. But that's on us, a hundred percent. So you so, telling yourself to be yourself. So back then you weren't being yourself. I wasn't being myself when I say that because okay. So I started with the whole all oh, bad bitch listening DJ choose, mm-hmm. and then I grew up and I said, you know what, I want to focus on juice for kids. So once I did that, I said I can't do this. So then I changed it to, hey, mom, can I have some soda? No, but you can have some juice. Hmm, delicious. Got you. That became hella catchy. That shit broke. Mm -hmm. So when I say be you, it's okay to change up. 
everybody looked at me like I was crazy when I stopped all the, the ratchet shit. I lost a lot of followers. I lost a lot of fans. I lost a lot of support. But you gained some more. But I gained. When you start getting politicians calling you, asking, can you come speak on their behalf? And you start getting, you, you just start getting into another realm. Exactly. So I left one thing to make change in another. So when it comes to me being in East Texas, when I tell a young kid to be you, be you and be unapologetic about being you. Don't let nobody tell you that your shit is wrong, that your shit ain't right. And if you want to change at the drop of the dime, you want to say, you know what? I don't want to do this shit no more. I want to do this. Go. Do it. But make sure when you make that decision, I always tell the story about how I quit football. I'm playing on the number one team, eighth grade. Coach, all right, you know your route. Ten, slant in. Ran my 10, slant in, went up for that a, ball. Is that a flag pole? I don't know. I think I, that's a flag pole. Let Go me ahead. tell you something. I ran that 10, and I slanted it in. I got my ass towed the fuck up. Boom! Bow! You said, I'm done with this. I, hey, said, no. I said, oh, no. <laughs> Same for me. I walked to the side. I did this. My dad came down like, you all right? What's, what's wrong? I said, I ain't going to make basketball season if I keep on doing this. <laughs> no, no, real talk. And he, he said, okay. But just know, tomorrow, if you quit today, tomorrow we start training for basketball. Right. And I was cool with that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know I'm a firm believer in it's okay to switch that shit up. But if you switch it up, you better be full, full-fledged and in it. But wow. it takes growth because as individuals, we grow with time. So you were in that ratchet stuff in the beginning because that's maybe who you were in the beginning. But as you grew, you grew out of that. So your clientele – hopefully it will grow with you in everything yeah. that you do. Well, definitely because, I mean, shoot, now you can go to an elementary school and DJ from 5 to 7 and make more money than DJing from 7 to midnight. Real you know. talk. <laughs> I like what you're doing, man, the way you're looking out for those artists, trying to, you know, promote what's going on in East Texas, man. We at Boss Talk, thank you for doing that, bro. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, that's my roots, and I, I love the city. I love all those cities you was name, and everything about that whole place is who I am. So yeah. I appreciate the way you go in for my, my people down there. Oh, for sure, Real man. talk, man. That's a good thing, bro. You know, um, Coming from the streets, you know, I, I I know about what's going on down there. I know them streets. Like, I, that's how this got here. Just hustling. I come from down there with mine. Yeah. So I love you. Where is this the blaze that is off the loop? Where yet? It's a, uh, you know, with Traditions, the restaurant, it's, it's, it's off of Broadway, mm. man. It's okay. a little old school spot called Traditions, man. You know, like a Luby's cafeteria. Type Pretty good or it ain't good food? I mean, I'm going to eat there, you know what I'm that's saying? Older folks. Yeah, yeah, older folks. It's all, it's yeah, all good. Yeah, 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 you know. When you you, you got to take some salt and pepper when you go. <laughs> Maybe a little Lyris season, they, they, a little Tony Sanders. He's just a country boy. He down out there. He out of Atlanta. He down there eating good. He go down to Gladys Night Kitchen or something. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. I want the I want the shrimp and grits too, man. Yeah, get yeah. Out there East Texas, they be like shrimp and grits. No, <laughs> oh, no. Do you have any uh, kids? Any? No, I ain't got a kid, no kids. Man. No old lady. No like. Nah, man. We. I'm just. So, so he's single too. Mm. But he needs a single now. You know me. Nah, you hit up a long nah, time ago. We, but I'm ready. He might be picky. I'm, no, nah, I'm actually ready. And it, it took me a long time to get ready. But now that you're ready, ain't nothing popping up for you. Ain't shit popping. No, nah, I ain't going to say that, no. <laughs> it's ain't nah, nothing popping. Nah, nah, so oh, so who is the ideal female for you? Same thing I'm well, asking. Yeah, D DJ Justin. Juice. Yeah. What, Man, what? shit. Somebody who respects themselves and who is a go-getter on their own and a motivator. Because I'm a motivator. If you dance, I'm going to go look up dance, and I'm going to dance with you. If you play chess, that's what I'm going to go learn how to play chess. That's how I am. As a person, I'm adaptive. So I don't need much. I just need you to fuck with me. That's it. And that sounds like very basic, but I just need you to to be solid, to mm -hmm. be around, to be that helping ear. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's it. Sometimes just listen and not mm -hmm. even say nothing. Just let so me go ahead and get it out. My question, because I know earlier you're telling me that you were raised by your dad. You didn't come back into your mom's life till later on, right? And I know I've met a lot of people who were raised by their mom and didn't have a father figure in their life. How was it the other way around, having your dad there, but do you feel like you missed anything, not having your mom there? Oh, dang, that's a real question. Uh, <laughs> nah, the reason why I say it's real because... 
the way I treated women in my past mm -hmm. might have been for the lack of not having not having the mother there the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then the grind, the get up and get your ass, get your shit together. Your dad is always that, gonna do that. Like I remember I used to go cut grass and go put money inside the little go get a little jug, get go down, cut twenty, twenty, twenty. And then I'm like, damn, I need fifteen more dollars to get these shoes. I go cut that, boom, for fifteen. Then go get the shoes. Came back to the crib. Pops was like, I showed my dad the shoes. He's like, oh, them nice. He's like, how you get them? I was like, man, I was out, you know, mowing yards. He was like, oh, damn, that's what's up. You was out there getting okay. He said, our, our grass mold? <laughs> and I was like. Because you're not getting paid for that. I, so I was, that's the reason I was why like, like. I was like, nah, but I'll do it tomorrow. He said, nah, you're going to get your ass up right now. And go do it today. It's 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. I'm outside with a with a lawnmower and a flashlight. Trying to see. I know the neighbor's pissed the fuck off. Like, <laughs> why is this nigga outside cutting his grass? He gotta be in trouble. Mm. Yeah. Because my philosophy always about um having two parents in a household. Because I always feel like for like he and I always get into it. Like as our son, he's now 13. Mm -hmm. He always say that woman, we baby our boys. We always hugging on them and kissing. And like he's a gonna be a man you can't be babying him still i always feel like our role as a woman is to teach men how to be or boys how to be the sensitive side how to be the caring side how to treat a woman all yeah, of that, that. Shit to a certain degree though because <laughs> sometimes y'all be overdoing that shit and <laughs> motherfucker don't know why my niggas just yeah, spoke they, 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 they 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 God damn yeah, yeah that's it Playing the game and laying on his mama. Yeah, yeah. No, so, but then you have the balance. Then you have the man. That nigga better go mow that yard. I don't care about yeah. none of that. <laughs> that nigga better get out and punch that nigga in the hey, chest. But I will say this that my dad did. I remember uh, this chick got me something for Valentine's Day. I, I mean, I was in I was probably seventh grade or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed him. He was like, what you get her? That ain't my girlfriend. I ain't got nothing. He was like. Nah, call her and find out where she stayed. We got to go get her something. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Went to Walgreens, got a little bullshit ass bear and some candy and shit, went to her house. And then, you know what I found out? What? Why she smelled like that. It wasn't a musty smell, but you know how some, some people have a particular smell? Well, her whole house, house smelled. Smell. I was like, oh, okay. That's it. That's, I get it. If I'm messing with you, like, damn, yeah. she smelled like a house. They need, yeah. they need to clean up. I, it wasn't no, dirty though. Messing with it, I'm just. Like, maybe she what they have? They probably have pets. Nah, nah maybe it wasn't musty. No, it was like it was, a certain scent. It, it, it was like they had the same no, bath and body work Fabri, candle. Fabri or something. Okay, okay. It's okay. like they had the same candle. Fabri, and they like the whole goddamn year. They yeah, these same nah, brand of it. candles. I get it. I eat the mothball smell. All that. Yeah, like, old folks have mothballs yeah. in the house. You can smell their clothes, and you yeah, be like, damn. My grandma got rid of that stuff. It used to be like that. Like he messed with you. What I love that smell. <laughs> yeah, but so so top three artists of all time. Gotta have them. Mm. You know, you gotta have them. Dead or alive. Gotta have them. Outcast. That's your number one. Did stop? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Uh Outcast mm. is your number one. Damn, number no. one outcast. And I don't blame you because I love Big Boy and I love you heard me mention a while ago when you said them them niggas is good. Don't get it wrong. Now me, I'm gonna pick UGK because I'm a, I'm that's you know that, that, but that's that your, I'm Texas. But, but that's right? your equal. I like that's that, right. That could yeah. be your equal because you from Texas. But I like so, them niggas, man. Yeah, that's so, you know, because I, really, I grew up. Well, I mean, I grew up off, off of UGK, A Ball, MJG, you know. Ain't what it saying? funny how uh, niggas on the East Coast DJ don't be Squeaky. feeling that? They don't be knowing. I they mean, don't they never even list like they never knew yeah, them before Swab Jay -Z. House was it. They didn't know Tila? that. They right. didn't know that. Before before everything broke and we was listening to that years before anybody knew about this stuff. But see, being in Atlanta, I was Y'all would have known it. Yeah. to the Nas is the Memphis Bleach. No, I did too. Siegel, I did too. Just because I think Atlanta had that. Had no, that I East listened Coast to him, like. but I can't say that when I felt, I felt. Yeah, you know it's a difference than listening to somebody. Yeah, but when, so many people when from UGK hit, I felt. Or uh, when Outkast, be honest, yeah. it's different. Nah, the thing it about, hit all the way different, the and thing, you know it. The thing about Outkast is every album was totally different. Different. 
And they told you stories. That's the first outcast we got. Mm-hmm. And I they, like it. They they tell you stories. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta go outcast. Now my number two, Curtis Mayfield. Really? That's hot. I like it. You Me too. I like that too. That's the first Curtis Mayfield. I know, but I like Curtis Mayfield, bro. Stop hey, playing. I'm your mama, I'm your daddy. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. It's heavy. Yeah, need, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm your pusher. <laughs> hey, that That's and, your number two, Curtis Mayfield. And then I don't even know. Like if Give I me have three. a three. Probably yeah. Frank Sinatra. Wow. I love me some ah, Frank Sinatra. I knew you were gonna say like, that. He like, just got ooh. Like Frank Sinatra. Nah, that's, that's strange. That's one. strangers in the night. Mm-hmm. Like I go hard. Like, I got it on. A, I got a 1967 Montgomery Ward system. It has the uh, record player, eight track, and the mm-hmm. FM. You know what I'm saying? And it still worked just like it's day going one. down. And yeah, I played it in the house. And you can hear the look. Yeah, you can hear all that. You do that muddy bass. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't say Frank Sinatra without saying like Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin. I like mean, them three right there. You right. But it was just something about Frank. And I think Frank got a lot of black people's songs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was kind of like. I think so. That's that, what was uh, going on during that if time. You watched that Ma Rainey joint, that Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like Frank, just like Elvis, those wasn't Elvis songs. Those mm-hmm. were black folks' songs. That's right. So. I get it. You can't. You know I, I, I get you it. I totally Elvis, get it. You got to say Elvis is great. I totally get but it. You know where know it came, it came from. from, and that's why I fuck with Frank. I know he was great, but I know where it came from. <laughs> there it is, man. So what? Um, what? What? When, What's the three? He, he said, said uh, okay. Outcast, uh, Curtis, Curtis, and Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a good. That's a good top three. And those are all the first three, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you said, oh, they said, <laughs> first three. Because that's the first three ever been on here, right? And we do that every time, right? I just like to hear what y'all gonna say because it's like everybody got something different. Nah, I mean, just like uh, on the way up here, I listen to Bank Bankroll Fresh. Okay. I listen to A Ball MJG okay. uh, coming out hard. Album, okay. And I listen to Outkast. What about Muddy Waters? You ain't listening to by Smoothie. No, nah, that was just on my way up here. It was just, just more. Nah, with you. I fuck with Smoothie. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you listen to that whole that whole all, thing rock. All Smoothie shit go. And I didn't nice. know it. I met the nigga and was like, damn, this yeah. nigga whole thing go yeah. all the way through. Wait till you hear this Smitty stuff, though. Ooh, she got something man. heavy coming. Man, look. You, are you ready I for it? I can't wait for her to drop it. You said Is she here for a video today or y'all just up here on? We, we had a situation where we don't have a situation at the same time. Okay. So, uh, you know. Just chilling. Yeah, just just yeah, rocking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, we out here. That's you know what's saying? up, we man. We're going to go to some little brunch spots. We're going to eat. Chill, on, yeah. Taking to meet some DJs. Yeah, know? yeah. That's that's networking. Yeah, networking. yeah. That's what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. always working. Yeah, that's I got it. thing he always teach me. He always said, let me tell you, if you make a trip, make it a business trip one way or the other. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out something. We're going to have fun, but I'm also going to call damn near everybody I know. Like, my phone right now, people waiting. Like, mm-hmm. what we going to do this evening? Have Cause. you guys ever did anything where y'all sit at the same place? Because I, I want to bring her in. Yeah, we can. We Have can. y'all done that before or no? No, we haven't, but we can. Yeah, that's what yeah, I want to do. Yeah. Say, so check it, man. It's a unique hustle, man. Boss Talk 101, man. My boy DJ Juice showed up today and showed out. Gave us a hell of an interview, man. It's Boss Talk 101. And we out.